So we got a couple of pretty good little runs down here. Let's see if we can sand them out. Probably we'll still see it, but we can make it look better. All right, let me show you what I got here. This is 600, 600, 12, a piece of 3,000, and a piece of 5,000. We have coarse compound and fine compound. Got my little handheld polisher. Hopefully that'll reach most of it. Got us a cup of clean water. Just gonna put everything in there. This little piece of paint paddle. All right, hold up. When I was watching this video back, I noticed that I was kind of giving you some bad information. The reason I used the grits I had in the cup is because that's just what I had in the cup from another run that I sanded out on a different project. So let me back up and explain a couple things. You can use whatever grit you want to get to that final step where you can polish. So on the head gate, I went 600, 1200, 3000. 5,000. Now from 12 to 3 is a big step and I had to spend a lot more time with the 3,000. And there's probably still some 1,200 scratches in it that didn't come out. Don't tell anybody. All I'm saying is you pick whatever combination you want. You can do every single one of them if you want or you can find the combination that works for you. It's really going to depend on whatever paint surface you're polishing and the polishing products that you're using. There's tons of stuff out there so for me to say A, B, and C works, I'm not going to do it. There's just too many things out there but you've got to find the right combination that works for you. On the head gate, what I did worked for me. I probably had to put more effort in the end with the polish to get rid of some scratches. May still be a few there. Anyway, above the wheel well, I used more steps because I looked back, saw scratches, and realized that I'm just stepping it out too much. After I polished it and I thought I was close to being finished, I had to back up and re-sand it because there were still scratches from the previous step. So use any combination you want but the goal is a flat, shiny surface with no scratches left. And don't go through. Really don't want to climb in this bed, but I'm going to put down some blankets, something to distribute the weight. It's gonna to have to get in there. Now this paint is single stage. The thing about single stage is when it drips like that, it changes the color. So even though we sand this out and polish it, it's probably still gonna be there, or it still look like it's there. You'll still be able to see it. We'll try to make it look better. You may be able to see the little bit of color change. It's a little bit lighter than that. You'll see these dark areas. All that's probably still gonna be there when we get it flat, cause it's single stage. When we sand this, we wanna try to stay on top of the runs. We're gonna wrap this paint paddle with, with sandpaper and sand across it and try not to let the block roll. So when we're sanding, we wanna sand the middle of the run, but we don't wanna sand beside it. Pretty tricky. Sometimes I'll put some tape on each side of the run or to, to keep me from going through around it. I usually just try to stay on top of the run and, and try not to let the block touch the paint where there is no run. We'll start with 600. Wrap it nice and tight so that it stays flat. And then we're gonna sand across these runs. Now, since there's several of them, it's pretty easy to stay flat on top of them. If this was one run, that's when you have trouble when you go through because you're, you teeter-totter on top of the run. It'll sand each side of the run as well as the run, and then you end up going through beside it. So with a bunch of runs, it helps keep it flat. So let's see if we can sand this down with some 600. I'm going to have to lay down here. <sighs> so you can see we're staying on top of the run. And even though it's hitting over here, every once in a while, I got tape there to keep it from sanding the paint. So I can concentrate and try to stay on top of the runs. Keep this paper tight on the block.
look close, you'll see I'm standing on the runs and I'm also standing off of the run. That's the danger zone. You don't want to be standing off of the run because it's going to go through. And this being single stage, it's not, there's not that much paint on here. It's not very thick. I'm going to use the edge of the block and try to stay on top of those runs. thing to do, especially inside a bed. And 600 and I'm gonna get them close but not gone because I need to switch over to a finer grit and get out the 600 scratches and take it a little bit further down I've got a good grip on this to keep it, trying to keep it on top of that, that tip of that run. Ah, some of these are just gonna not come out. spot. I went to a fresh, clean, sharp sp spot on the paper. You see a lot of those are really close to being gone. As far as down here, a lot of these are close to being gone. Need a little bit more on these. That little spot started to roll around this body line. That's where you want to be really careful. It's really easy to go through on a body line. Okay, she's close. I would like to go a little further, but we have to leave enough paint on here to be able to use the 1200 to get rid of the 600 scratches. It's also going to take it a little bit further down and hopefully these spots will disappear. Sometimes if you don't get it flat with your six or 800, something coarser, you're not going to get it any flatter with a finer grit like 12, 1500 because it usually just it doesn't sand fast enough to flatten. It's just getting rid of the previous scratches. This type of run in the area that it's in, I don't think my goal is really to get rid of it completely. I would like to, but I don't think it's possible to get it completely gone. I'm gonna risk going through. We're gonna try to stop short of going through. 
Now I'm still using a block and I'm concentrating on keeping this thing flat as I can, not ride, in, not ride this, the body line or an edge, I'm trying not to go through and trying to get it flat and get rid of my 600 marks. You want to keep checking because you don't want to go too far. I still see it, but it's close to being gone. We're trying to go just far enough so that everything is flat and these spots disappear. These shiny spots, which are really low spots, till they disappear. Now with a grit like 1200, it's still taking off plenty of paint, plenty of material, so still have to be careful with it as well. Still see that. But, I don't know if it's bothering me enough to risk going through. Still see a few of the little spots, but... If you go through, the only way to fix it, put more paint on, so I think I'm gonna try to stop there. This is my 3000. I'll do it by hand for a second. Got a couple way back over here in the corner kind of behind this, so I'm not gonna worry about those. Just want this out here where I could see it be gone. And you can polish this by hand, it takes a lot of time. I think I can get my polisher in here and hit it, so I'm gonna use my polisher instead. But I wanna get it really in the finest grit I can before I start the polishing. This is 3000. To get rid of 1200 grit, you have to work the 3000 pretty good. our coarse compound. Might get to that corner. You still see a few little ripples, but it's a lot better than it was. We haven't gone through, so it doesn't catch your eye like a run did. Can't quite get to this corner, so I'm gonna polish this by hand. Run over it just a little bit more and we'll call it done. That's 3,000. And we'll run over it with this 5,000. Got one pretty good little drip in there, but I'm just not gonna worry about it. Got that little drip right there. These are out here. They're pretty much gone. See a little bit of a trace of them, but man, it's 100% better than it was. So you can still see them just a little bit. I'm gonna say this is the panel with the runs on it, right? These are all your runs. Now if we take this panel and lay it flat, and we lay it flat, this is basically the profile of our runs. This is the surface underneath the metal. This is the layer of paint. Then this would be the profile of those fingers hanging down. So your goal is to get these high ridges sanded down even with the rest of the paint. So when you use your block, you want it to sit on those ridges on the high part, right? You wanna sand those down until it's all one flat surface. What you don't wanna do is sand through this to the layers underneath. That's what I was talking about, teeter-tottering on top of the run. You can't do that, you can't just run over it. You've got, to, you have to hold that block flat. You have to control the block so that it sands where you want it to sand. Clean it, look at it, whatever it takes, try not to go through. I put tape outside of the run, so if I, I went over and hit it, it wouldn't sand. Once you get close enough, you have to remove the tape, get it out of the way so that you can continue to sand it flat. Now that being said, let me draw an exaggerated run on the same horizontal plane. Surface underneath. That's the profile of your run. Now, if it's big enough, sometimes I'll slice the top off of it with a razor blade. I'll just cut it. 
that much of it's gone. You gotta be careful if you cut too deep. Just you're messing up from the get-go. So I'll take just enough off to make it a little easier. So if it's tall enough, I slice off some, just to give me a good starting point. Then I'm gonna start sanding. Now, the grit that you start with is up to you. I started with 600 on this. Kind of aggressive, but I wanna be aggressive. If you start too fine of a grit, it takes so long to bring it down, you're gonna hit around it because you're just spending so much time on it. If you use a course of grit, you get rid of the high spot faster without spending too much time on it. Now at some point, we have to switch over from six to something finer. You have to slowly step up your grits to get rid of the scratches that were there before. You can do whatever steps you want, but just realize that you have to spend enough time in the next step to get rid of the scratches in the previous step. If I've got 600 scratches in that. I've got to spend enough time to get below that with my next grit. Whatever I stepped up to, 800, 1,000, 1,500, whatever those are, I've got to take them out. I've got to sand with something finer. So we're slowly bringing this down by using finer and finer grits until eventually it's flat and it's in fine enough grit that you can polish it to a shine. Here's the only other one pretty good one see if we can get rid of that now since this run is so long i'm gonna use a longer block this is 600 again now i can use this paper wet or dry i'm gonna leave it dry for a minute so you can see what's going on so you'll see here what i was talking about as far as you're trying to stay on top of the run but you'll also hit around the run if you're not careful. That's where you'll end up going through. Let's go ahead and wet this. It's just clogging the paper up. We'll go back to the small piece, small block with the 600. That way I can control it just a little bit better. So there's lots of different ways to sand out runs. Some people will take a razor blade and scrape the run away till they get it close and then switch over to sandpaper. If you get used to doing that method, it works pretty well. It also depends on your material. It has to be a fairly hard material to scrape. The softer stuff wants to tear. And some people can get really good at doing the razor blade technique, but it's definitely not my preferred technique. Some people would put a thin coat of glazing putty or body filler across it, and then that gives you something to sand so that you're not hitting these areas that aren't part of the run. This may be thick enough up here. Down here, it's probably not as thick. If you wipe this with the glazing putty, it gives you something to sand on. Right now, I'm just leaving it up to my ability to keep this flat. I wanna stop just short of getting all of it flat. I have to leave enough material to sand out my 600 scratches. Now, some of this may be the discoloration from the runs. It may not go away. I see a little spot here that hasn't been sanded. Sand it just a little bit more. Cut me a piece of 2000 put on here. I can see the discoloration caused by the single stage running. So you can't get rid of that but it's flat now. A little bit of compound. <laughs> Gotta be careful not to get it too hot. Run over it with this fine compound and we'll be done. Ah, here's another run up a little bit higher. Let's get rid of that one. Still see scratches. I don't think I spent enough time there. So all that is still a mess. I'm gonna sand on it a little bit more, see if I can get a little bit flatter. Going back to my 600. There's a lot more to this run. So what you're seeing is the light shade of sealer. So evidently the sealer ran, there's a high ridge or run of sealer. I've sanded through the blue. Now the sealer is showing. Also see the fingers still there. There's some more runs here, there and everywhere in this area. So the only thing we can do now, is sand it flat and repaint it. I'm gonna go ahead and block it down more with 1500. I'm gonna get it as flat as I can, polish it out. It'll probably be a while before I'm ready to paint this. So I'll just try to get it looking as good as I can in the meantime. Thank you. 
Next step is 2,000. Now I'll go over it with a 3,000. Now this 3,000, I use it wet. It's starting to shine up a little bit. So there's where I went through. There's nothing I can do about that. It's flat and shiny now. It's still got a little bit of the wave to it from the run. Overall, it looks better than it did, other than where I went through. It's hard not to do that if there's a run in the sealer. It's just a high ridge. So if you sand it flat, you're gonna run into that ridge eventually. Now I can take some blue paint and drag it, try to hide that bright looking spot. But to make it go away completely, you have to pick a section. You can try rolling the edge making a soft edge, taping this up all the way around it. You just paint this section, or you can do the entire bedside. I'm not ready to do that yet. This is looking so good, I think I'll do the whole bed. No. So there you go. Should give you an idea how to get rid of a run. It's really easy to go through when you're sanding single stage. When single stage runs, it changes color. So you may not be able to get it gone completely. You know, somewhere on the outside of the car, it'd be a repaint. Inside the bed, I don't think it's that big a deal. Something like that, you have to really look for it to see it. it doesn't stick out as much as the actual runs would. So I think we're in better shape than we were. I'm gonna get busy and sand another one out. We'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.